Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta two to developers. This is available at the same time for everyone, but you need a supported device, which means an iPhone 15 pro or 15 pro max, along with M one supported iPads and Macs. Anything after that should be supported, but unfortunately it's only on the 15 pro and 15 pro max. This came in at a fairly large 1.48 gigabytes on the 15 pro max and was released alongside many other updates along with iPad OS 18.1 beta 2, Mac OS 15.1 beta 2, and iOS 18 beta 6 updates and all of the others to go along with that. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 22B5023E. This particular build does include updates and changes. And the first one is a modem update. We do have a modem update from 2.15.01 to 2.16.00. Hopefully this helps with overall connectivity that people were having many issues with, with 18.1 beta one, but we'll have to give it a few days and see if it actually resolves it. As far as new features, well, it seems like Apple intelligence is wanting to work a little bit better in the European union. However, it's not working entirely, but if you set your language and region in your different settings to English, us English, and as well as iCloud, it should update and allow you to use it. But many people are not able to enable this. Also, Apple intelligence seems to be updated a little bit with the Siri animation. So here on the left, we have beta one on the right is beta two. If we enable it, it seems to have more of a wobble on the right here. I'll show you that one more time. So I'll press and hold. And it seems to have a more significant animation, letting you know that it's moving. However, it doesn't seem to be the more intelligent version of Siri just yet. So if we say, how can we make pizza? And you'll see there's some general things here, but nothing really groundbreaking just yet. Hopefully this will be updated in the near future. One of the features we get in this that's now in this particular update is if we go to maybe Safari here and we go to the menu, we can now hide distracting items. This comes along from beta five. So if we want to hide this, we can just hide and it goes away. It's one of the best animations we've seen. So if we want to hide this or ads or anything else, we can do that cancel and they just come right back. So that's something that they've added that was in beta five of iOS 18. And they've added that to this update. In fact, everything from iOS 18 beta five seems to be in this update as well, including the home page changes. If we press and hold tap edit, we now have the option to edit pages, just like we did in beta five. And we also have the option. If we press and hold, go to edit and customize, they've moved the automatic icon to the third icon in. So that's a pretty small change, but something they've updated. They've also updated the maps and find my icon. So there's the find my icon. It looks a little bit better. The maps icon. I'm not so sure about. So if we go to maps here, you'll see that it's a little bit darker where it had a little bit more contrast before. And again, I've shown this in other videos, but it's new to beta two of iOS 18.1 call recording is still here. So if you're placing a phone call, tap the upper left, you can go into call recording. However, they haven't seemed to add this for different devices yet as this beta is still only available to the 15 pro and 15 pro max. So we don't know if this is specific to Apple intelligence or if they'll include it with other devices later on. If we go into the control center and we go to add new icons, they've made some updates here. Not only do we have many of the refinements that we got with beta five, but we also have additions here. If we scroll down, we'll go to beta one. So I can show you side by side. The first updates you'll see is we have a new capture section where they've included camera scan code and magnifier. Those icons in particular are not new, but it is in a new section named capture. If we scroll down to connectivity, we have a new Bluetooth icon as well. So this toggles Bluetooth on and off, but it doesn't seem to actually turn it off like many people want. So if we turn that off, we'll go into settings, then we'll go over to Bluetooth here. So if we go into Bluetooth, then we turn this on here. It should toggle it on and off. We'll go back, toggle it off you'll see nothing changes. It's basically disabling it for 24 hours again. I know many people want it to just turn off in general, but it doesn't seem to be doing that just yet. And as we continue to scroll down, the only changes are definitely smoothness. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but also some icon changes. Other than that, there's not really many additions to the overall control center. The same is true for the lock screen. So if we go to the lock screen, press and hold, and then go to customize and go to the lock screen here, we have the similar updates just like we did before, 
So you can see we have the same lock screen updates. If we go down to connectivity, it's missing Bluetooth though here for some reason. They haven't added it to the lock screen. Maybe they'll add this in a future update. If we go into photos, the first thing we get is a new splash screen that says there's an all new design. So they've gotten rid of the carousel just like they did in beta five and there's new collections and fully customizable. You'll see we no longer have the carousel where we go from left to right. And if we scroll down, albums have been updated and they're much wider now. So that's sort of a visual design change. And some people will either really like this or unfortunately not like it at all since we no longer have that carousel design, but they've removed it along with all of the other changes they've had with beta five. And again, the same is true here. When you go into customize, you'll see they've removed the overall customized photo option at the top. It looks a little bit different and they've just kept sort of the collections at the bottom and named it customize and reorder. Now, the first time you go into music, you'll get a new splash screen saying that browse is now called new and share play on more devices. This is a screenshot of it. The first time I went in, but you can see here under the music app, it now says new instead of browse. So they've changed this around. I'm not really sure why, but it's not too different other than just changing the name and the icon there. That's about it. Other than that, of course, share play is in more places within settings. There's a change. If we go into general and then scroll down, you'll see autofill and passwords has a new icon. So on the left here, you'll see the old icon on the right is the new icon. They've also updated the storage section. So if we go into iPhone storage, give it just a moment, we can scroll all the way to the bottom and we now have a new hidden app section. Again, this is part of beta five, but is now in iOS 18.1 beta two. If we go back, scroll down, go back to general here and scroll down, go into iCloud within iCloud under the iCloud features section, we now have dark mode icons and it looks a little bit different. So that's been updated just a little bit. Additionally, if we go back to Wi-Fi, under Wi-Fi, we have a new section for private Wi-Fi address. If we go into this, you'll see we have three options for off, fixed and rotating. So this is something we can switch between now if we wanted to constantly rotate that and keep things a little bit more private. If we go into the wallet app, there's an update here as well for some people. It doesn't seem to be working hundred percent, but Apple cash is now showing up in India and the UK. But when you try to go through it, it won't let you actually set it up as it's looking for us documents. So hopefully this is something they roll out around the world a little bit more. Additionally, we have some splash screens. So if we go into photos, I took some screenshots of them. The first time you go into notes, you have a new splash screen. You also have one when you go into home and some people are seeing a splash screen when you go into podcasts. I actually didn't have that pop up at all and translate as well. So if we go into translate, let's see if it pops up. Give it just a moment and it didn't show for me, but some people are seeing a new splash screen there. Another change that some people are saying is different or is fixed is the emoji keyboard. If I go into this, you'll see, I still have the stickers option here in beta two. So iOS 18.1 beta two is showing this and it's showing pretty normal, but you'll see here as we go through the different options, it seems like it's not the larger sized emoji icons, but it's back to normal, but with additional options here. So it looks a little changed for me on some versions. It doesn't, this just showed up before this, it didn't. So I don't know why it just took a while to show, but it is a little bit different again. As far as bugs, well, some people are saying the emoji bug is fixed that people were having. And as far as the standby mode, many people were saying that it was fixed with iOS 17.6.1, but it looks like it's not fixed for everyone just yet. If we go in here, give it a moment to go into standby while it's charging on a dock. There we go. It took a second, press and hold to edit. It verifies with face ID and it seems to work just fine for me now. Prior to this, it wasn't working with certain versions, but it seems much less buggy in this version compared to previous versions. When it comes to performance, it seems to be pretty smooth overall. Scrolling is nice and fast. You may have already seen that compared to the same device running beta one. So as we scroll through, things are super smooth, maybe a little bit slow from time to time, but it is doing a lot of things in the background. But in general, it seems to be very smooth, nice and fast as far as performance and much better. As far as the overall heat, it feels nice and cool, but again, it's processing things in the background. It's going to take a while for everything to process. And then once it's done, it will cool down. That will use additional battery as well. And in settings within battery, if we go to battery health, I'm down to 92% with 275 cycles. If we take a look at the last 10 days, 
Today I've had one hour and 30 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 11 minutes of screen idle time, basically playing music in the background, but that was on the charger. Currently I'm down to 59%. My battery has not been great on iOS 18.1 beta one, and it will take a few days to measure beta two. So be sure to check back on the weekend for the follow-up. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1 beta two or iOS 18 beta six at this point, if you haven't installed them and you're worried about bugs, I would probably hold off. But if you have a secondary device or you have a backup and a computer to restore, then I would definitely try it out once the public beta releases. And I would expect that probably tomorrow at this point. As far as iOS 18.1 beta three, well, we could see that as soon as next week, or it could be a bi-weekly schedule like we've been seeing with earlier iOS 18 betas. However, we could see it as soon as the 19th next week, but if not, we would see it on the 26th. The same is true with iOS 18 beta seven. We could have seven or eight betas at this point. I would expect beta seven, maybe on the 19th with the RC around the 26th or the second. Then we'd get the final release sometime, maybe in the second or third week of September, depending on when Apple launches the iPhone 16. We could see another release of iOS 17 with iOS 17.7 .7 as well, but that's typically around the time of the iOS 18 launch. As far as benchmarks, let's take a look at those. I scored 2,791 for single core, 6,793 for multi-core. This is a little bit better than the previous version, even after running it for a few days. You can see here, this was on the weekend. It's one point better for single core, but a couple hundred better for multi-core. So hopefully we'll see some improvements after everything's done processing. So that's everything so far in iOS 18.1 beta two. And if we find additional features, which I would expect we do, I'll mention it a little bit later this week in the weekend follow-up. Also, if you've found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.